Hello, my name is Mary Stern. It's a beautiful Friday in North Vancouver, and I am coming to you to talk about seniors' health. And today's topic is on the feet. Do not forget the feet. So I'm a physiotherapist, and I'm owner of Blue Ridge Physio here in North Vancouver. Also work in Burnaby. And I uh, want to talk about the feet today because they do get neglected. And for, for no other reason, sometimes then we don't see them all the time. And sometimes people even choose to not see them all the time. Um, we have loved ones that we know, most likely um, our elderly family, that might have trouble getting off the chair. So sometimes we help them with strengthening, sometimes we help them with balance. But have we had a look at their feet? And I want to talk today about what you might find when you pull back the curtains or the socks on those feet and how we can help them. And I, I don't mean to, mean to make fun of the feet, but we're going we're gonna to make fun of my feet now um, as we talk about the first pitfall. Um, and, and, you know, I might want to rephrase this pitfall, but first challenge when it comes to feet. So structurally, the first one is that structurally our feet might start to get compressed. Um, we might get hallux valgus, which you're about to see, which is where the toes start to come out. And this can change the way we walk. It can change the way we plant our feet and it can even um, cause pain symptoms. So have a look at my feet. Here we go. Now, looking at these feet here, what you'll see is that I've actually done a, a not too bad job of trying to stretch out the toes with my intrinsics. I worked so hard on that right one that the left one won't do it anymore. But if you see my toes, sometimes when I get out of a shoe, you'll see this. That's hallux valgus. And this part here on that right side, you'll see it, um, can lead to bunion and pain and, you know, having to start to wear shoes that are always going to be soft in that area. And that's a challenge. So how do we prevent this? Now, not, I'm not just talking about seniors here. I'm talking about all of us folks in our 40s or 30s even or 50s, whatever stage you are at, um, starting to think about the intrinsics. If you do yoga, you might think about fanning the toes and planting, having three points, big toe, pinky toe, and heel as your tripod and just feeling the stability there. You might have learned from your physio that you can do intrinsics where you're activating the muscles that originate in the foot and attach to bones in the foot. So I'm doing a not wonderful, but wonderful for me, fanning motion that is helping to activate and stretch out this area. At each time I plant, then I have a little more control in surface area. Sometimes if you start to get really compressed in those feet, you can start to get a little bit too much pressure and nerve pain in the forefoot. So this is why this becomes super important. So this is the fanning motion. Um, and I'm going to talk while we're here about another structural issue that sometimes happens, which can be flat feet. Now flat feet, you can see I'm kind of caving in to this, what we call pronation. And this can happen if we lose um, some kind of strength and stability. And what will happen here is that we can get some irritation, not only through the ankle joint, but through the knee and a variety of other things. It's important to look at this as well and learn how to find that arch. Again, we can start with the preventative intrinsic. So I'm doing this foot shortening motion Note I'm not clawing with my toe to find that internal um, activation of the arch. I can also work on tip post. So if I go on to my toe and sort of slightly supinate, I'm working on a muscle here that will actually dynamically create stability of the arch under the foot. And we can do um, something similar by activating our everters as well. So your physio will take you through this. You don't have to remember it, but it's important to look First to find if we have these structural issues. That can be not just structural, it's not that you were born with them necessarily, but over time they can occur. Now, I'm gonna come back up so you're not just staring at my feet. <laughs> so we talked about the structural challenges. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about stiffness. So stiffness can lead to difficulty to actually get in and out of your chair. So I'm gonna to try to demonstrate here. I don't have a cameraman, so forgive me, but if you are with your loved one and they're trying to get another chair and you find that they're kind of falling back and falling back. So this can be related to a stiff ankle joint or even weakness through the toes, uh, not through the toes, but through the, um, the plantar flexors that keep the toes down. You might even look, if you take their shoes off, that their toes are up like this and they're trying to get up but they're not even planted so 
Of course, how are they going to do that? And so it's important to ensure uh, a couple of things. With the stiffness in the ankle, it might be a result of ankle stiffness itself, or it might be because the, the plantar flexors, so the calf muscles are quite tight. So looking at diagnosing and treating that is super important. We might also see that there's a lack of sensation, proprioception that's related to other things like diabetes or peripheral arterial disease. That can be improved, but it will require some intention and time. Um, and then, um, not necessarily related to getting in and out of your chair, but just walking on its own. If we have stiffness through the big toe, which is very, very common, or the forefoot, which is very, very common, then we start to walk with kind of just like a shuffle foot approach. And walking with that shuffle foot sometimes even has us walking in a little bit of external rotation. And that might also be related to the structural pelvis sometimes. And nothing is necessarily in isolation however it's important to note that this can certainly start to cause mobility issues as well so we want if i had to boil it down to two things we want mobility and we want stability so anything we can do to diagnose find those issues that are reducing the mobility and stability and treat them early on is going to help our loved ones stay mobile and stay happy and mobile and pain-free for longer. So I hope this was helpful. Again, this is not meant to be diagnostic and treatment on its own, but I want to encourage you to make it normal to, to ask your loved ones to see their feet and as well to have that treated as part of your treatment. Nothing in isolation, but your physiotherapist should give you a comprehensive diagnosis and treatment and looking at all of the structural areas. Thanks very much.